Hi, everyone. Welcome. Let me know in the comments if you could hear me before we start. Yes. Okay, there is no sound. Some people can hear us, some people can't. Let me know if you can hear me now. Okay, perfect. Hi everyone, welcome to our first ever LinkedIn Live, all about navigating LinkedIn and the importance of building community and personal branding. This has been so long in the making and I'm so excited for um, this session. Um, my name is Hiba Abdilahi. I am the social media manager for The Mom Project. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with The Mom Project, we're an organization dedicated to building a better workplace for women, moms, caregivers, for everybody. Um, we do this by connecting women and with career opportunities and community that supports their needs to thrive for, uh, personally and professionally. Uh, this means things like job opportunities that work for you. We have a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, mentorship program, career coaching, you name it, we got it. Um, if you're interested in learning more or joining us, uh, please visit themomproject.com and create a profile today. Um, I also want to take the time to uh, talk about a very special uh, program launch that we just launched not that long ago. It's called RISE. RISE is a scholarship program committed to accelerating equity for moms and women of color, uh, providing access to 100% funded upskilling certifications designed to help you break into tech. Um, we are still taking applications and the folks First cohort um, is opening very, very soon. So if you're interested in learning more and applying, uh, please visit work.themomproject.com slash rise. I will put that in the chat uh, for anybody that's interested um, in learning more. And um, we're just very excited about that program. So I'm also very excited to introduce to you guys June Kalasro. She um, is like one of my best friends now because she's just that amazing. Her energy is magnetic and I'm so excited to go live with her today. Um, I want to give you guys a little bit more on June. She's a recruiter, a career strategist. She's founder of Build with June Consulting. She spent the last five years building teams as a recruiter for some of the world's biggest tech companies, including including Google um, and also unicorn startups like Wish. Uh, June has helped hire over 300 people and she's helped them land their dream jobs and gave them opportunity to work and collaborate with over 70 forward thinking and emotional intelligent leaders in the tech industry. Um, she has a passion for building communities, companies, individuals. She also has a passion for LinkedIn. Um, I couldn't think of anybody better to do this LinkedIn live with than with June. Uh, she's so passionate about personal branding, and I'm just really excited to get into this with her today. So I want to introduce you guys to June. Um, come and join me, girl. <laughs> Hey. Hello. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. I was checking to see if everybody else can hear you, but I can hear you. So I think everybody else can hear you. Thank you so much for joining me today, June. Like I said, this has been so long in the making. Like we've been talking about this for like ever, I feel like, and you've literally become one of my closest friends just through this process. Um, I want you to let us know about your story, how you got to where you are today, how you started uh, Build with June, and just how you started utilizing LinkedIn. Because I think everyone has it, but not everyone knows how to utilize it correctly. So jump us right into that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm a little nervous right now because I'm <laughs> the one interviewing people. But hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is June. and Yes. How did I, do you want me to tell you how I started to get, how do I, how did I start in recruiting? Maybe a yes, little I want you to start. Yeah. I want you to start from the beginning. Like how did you get to uh, where you are today? So just walk us all the way back. Yes. 
And okay, so the majority of my background as far as experience is retail corporate sales. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I had my first child, Robbie. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so nervous, but <laughs> stop being so nervous. <laughs> June is like my emotional sister. <laughs> stop being so nervous. You're doing great. Okay. So the reason why I wanted to share this is because I know as a mother, it's hard to talk about these work gaps that we have. So, okay, I let the chairs out. So I, after working since I was 13 years old, the first time I actually took a break from working was when I had my child, my first child, Bobby. And it was literally two months after I graduated with my bachelor's degree in business marketing, business management. And I wanted to finally just take a break from working and enjoy and embrace that time of being a first time mother. Mm -hmm. So I did, I quit my job and we were fortunate because my husband is a veteran. Shout out to all the veterans out there, but he is a veteran and we were fortunate to receive the GI Bill to help pay for finances for our housing and for his education. So I took that opportunity to spend time with my newborn son. And it was then when I was dealing with a little bit of postpartum depression because it was the first time that I wasn't tied into a job, right? right. So I was almost lost my identity. But to make a long story short, it was the, I created a community within my local city here in Hayward, um, joined a nonprofit called No Excuse Mom. And No Excuse Mom is a global organization founded by fitness entrepreneur Maria Kang. And the overall mission there is to support mothers and children by creating these different communities in your local cities by hosting free workouts. So I was hosting free workouts at local parks for mothers and their children. But I actually wanted to show you a little bit about that too, because it's in my, it's in my website or on my website. Mm -hmm. um, but this is, let me show really quickly, just because I'm a visual person, but here it goes. Okay. So this is no excuse, mom. This was our actual first workout that I hosted at a local gym. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show this because this exposed me to the fundamentals of recruiting marketing and business development all of the core qualities and skills you need as a recruiter so once i joined this nonprofit, i started building this group in hayward and that eventually would lead to expanding this group to local cities here in the in the east bay mm -hmm. so when i decided to go back to work i talked about this experience put that on my resume and that would essentially lead me to start a career in recruiting. So I started at Aerotech as an agency recruiter, then worked at Google and then Wish. And now after five or six years, I'm pivoting again. Career pivots, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm now a business owner. So I, my overall passion is, I think it was, I think I wanted to talk about the importance of these work gaps, these times that we take away from work. Yes. Because these are the times that we rediscover ourselves and reevaluate what's really important in our lives. So if I if it wasn't, if I didn't take that time off to embrace the new journey as a mother, I would have never discovered my passion of building community and mentoring and coaching people. And I feel like my layoff happened for a reason because I have something there is something much more greater for me to accomplish. So 100%. 100%. and now my, my, now my mission is to really help early to mid-stage job seekers in their careers with their job search. So that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> Sorry for I the cheers. I love it. See, you didn't, you did not, you did so well. Um, honestly, guys um, who are from the Mom Project community, you know that that is something that um, a lot of our moms really deal with. It's those pivots. It's jumping into career that you're like, this might not be my passion or, you know, finding out what you really want to do after your leave. Like there's just so many things um, that encompass that journey of a mom. So, I mean, sending you a really, really, really big hug because um, it's tough. And a lot of the women in our community understand that as well. So 
Um, one of the things that a lot of the moms in our community like always ask us and um, being on the community team, I hear it all the time. How do I do LinkedIn right? <laughs> it is like the main thing everyone, especially now with like the pandemic, um, everybody's on LinkedIn and people are sending in mails. They're doing like just adding people randomly and just hoping for the best, you know, apply, easy applying for jobs and easy applying to 50 jobs and not hearing back. Like there's just so many things on this platform that people are doing that they're like, I'm doing it, but I'm not getting the results. Um, what tips do you have for people, uh, for mom, for women, um, anybody in general that is like trying to do LinkedIn right. So how did you start utilizing LinkedIn the right way? Okay. Well, as, okay. So I, okay, let's, let's kind of backtrack because I didn't start using utilizing LinkedIn the right way until I got laid off mm. as a business owner, as a potential employee Right now, just to be transparent, I'm not ready to go back to work because I am dealing with this pandemic as everyone is and the whole experience of social of uh, virtual learning. So right. I've decided just to spend time with my children and really embrace this extra time, but also invest in my business and myself. I only really utilize, so I've had over six years of experience using LinkedIn, but the majority of that experience was as a recruiter. So utilizing the tool to source candidates, really promote the brands and companies that I represented. Never ever in those five, six years did I ever use it as a tool to represent me as a professional, represent me as a working mom. And now I'm here today with you on a live because of the power of LinkedIn. So I just wanted to showcase that whole transformation of me mm -hmm. really only utilizing LinkedIn for the past five years as a sales tool that I used on a daily basis for my work, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, when I got laid off, I didn't know, I didn't plan to open up a business and start a business during COVID. You know, that's that's really risky, right? So 100%. But what happened was I just started experimenting and I've always, I continued what I did best. And that was interviewing people within my network, sharing their stories on my own social media platforms, never on LinkedIn because LinkedIn at first, what I thought could be intimidating. It's a professional right. platform. But then I started getting reached out by people within my own community asking me help for their LinkedIn profiles, with their resume and interview coaching. And I was always that I was always that go-to person for anyone that needed help with their job search. So I said, this is the perfect time to build my brand and business. And what, be what better way to do that than on LinkedIn? So I really didn't start building my LinkedIn and my expertise and sharing the world what value I can share until probably June okay. of this year. <laughs> And that's insane because from June until now, it's very a short amount of time, but you are someone that I feel like really utilizes the platform in a really good way. You know, um, being a social media manager, I know that each platform, you know, you got to utilize it in specific ways. What you do on Instagram, you're not doing on Twitter. What you do on Twitter, you're not really doing on LinkedIn. So I guess um, my question to you is, what have you noticed from just June until now um, that you've been doing that's kind of like elevated your LinkedIn experience? I have just been putting myself out there and sharing my story. And um, first things first, I basically, I think a lot of people get intimidated with LinkedIn. And if you want to do LinkedIn right as a job seeker, First things first is you want to optimize your LinkedIn profile to include all of the keywords and mm -hmm. also share your accomplishments and share your milestones. You want to also to look at it as an extension of your resume. But yes. LinkedIn is just as good, if not better than your resume, because for myself, I've worked with hiring managers from all of the, you know, some of the best tech companies in the world. And they always ask me, What's your LinkedIn profile look like? Because yep. it just kind of, it's, it's just visually stimulating because you see the story, right? You see the person, you see the story. And honestly, like 
it is your resume at this point, right? Like instead of sending in your resume, like you said, people want to see your LinkedIn page and everything's all there already. Why do you need my resume? Just go to my LinkedIn, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So that's what I did. Honestly, I, I optimized my LinkedIn profile at first, right? And then I just started producing content on a weekly, no, daily basis. So when you say content, do you mean like articles? Are you resharing? Like what what kind of content for other people that might yeah. be? And yeah. Job, yeah, and job, and this is a way for job seekers to stand out and have the opportunities come to them in their DMs, in their inbox. Okay. Because I want to share this too. When I, when I say content, just basically writing posts. Okay. Basically just sharing my layoff story and being open and vulnerable. And the reason why I did this is because we are at a historic high rate of unemployment. Especially with women, man women and mothers. Yes. I mean, you, I, you've just shared some stats. I think it was about 80%. 80%. Um, in September, 865,000, um, left the workforce and that was, mothers. yeah. Yeah. That's including me. Right. So it's, and many mothers in my own network, the reason why I wanted to start sharing my stories because I on LinkedIn by, by, by text posts, by blogs, by video posts, because I know many people could relate. Mm -hmm. So I basically just started sharing my layoff experience and then gradually started sharing tips and advice for job seekers when it comes to their job search, how to show up in interviews, how to rebuild your resume, how to show up on LinkedIn. And then that just kind of um, skyrocketed to me. I like I kept leveling myself every, every month by yeah. doing text posts to videos once a week to now videos every day to now having a LinkedIn live series. And because of all of this content and sharing my journey, I've had companies reach out to me. Yeah. To interview, even though I'm not interviewing, that just shows the power of LinkedIn. There's over 600, actually, now I want to say, yeah, over 630 million people on LinkedIn, about 90 million users of LinkedIn are senior level directors from companies. You want to look at LinkedIn. <laughs> you want to look at LinkedIn as the yellow pages. Do you remember the yellow pages? Yes, I mean, I'm younger, but I'm not that young, June. Thanks. I remember yellow pages. <laughs> So yeah, think of it the direct like as a directory, like a yellow a directory of all of the dream companies that you want to work for, right? So um, we have a question for you. Um, if you could get specific on what worked and what did not work when it came to like networking on uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, and that's from Cheryl. Thanks for the question, Cheryl. So okay, I could tell you what I could tell you what works and what doesn't. Let's start off with like the, the huge mistake that people are doing on LinkedIn. Yeah, let's start there. People are always reaching out to, like me as a recruiter, when, especially too when I was working at Google, my inbox was just flooded with in-mails of saying, hey, June, I see that you're a recruiter at Google. Here's my resume. Do you have time to chat? And it's so hard to reach back out, right? Because it's like your inbox is just getting, like, you know, it just moves all the way down. So yeah, like how do people even get like, to stand out from the crowd when it comes to that. Yeah. I think first thing before you decide to, and I want to, I want to voice this out there because you need to have networking and LinkedIn as part of your vocabulary. If you are a job seeker, entrepreneur, business owner, or just someone that just wants to grow professionally or even personally. And for every application that you do submit, you should make it a habit by reaching out to someone in that company because you can easily find someone there, right? Mm -hmm. By searching on the search bar. But the hugest mistake I've seen is when people are reaching out to these hiring managers or recruiters on LinkedIn, they make it about them, but they don't necessarily make it about the company. The company, yep. We get a lot of that from the mom project too. It's a lot of like me, 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 but it's like, okay, but what about the company that you're applying for, you know? Yeah, like what is it about the company that even motivated you to apply? For example, you're in social media, Hiba, and, and 
you know, I'm sure you get a lot of messages of people saying, are you like hiring for social? Because social media is probably one of the hottest skills right now or needed yeah. skills because we are in a remote environment. Right. But would you, let me ask you this. Would you, would you respond to someone saying, hi, I see, I, um, hi, I, I'm an aspiring social media uh, coordinator. Would you, would you have some time to give me some tips? Or would you say, hi, Hiba, I see that you've, have been in the industry for about a year or two and you are working at the mom project which is one of my favorite companies because your overall mission is supporting women mm -hmm. and mothers so do you get what i'm saying like you want to make it about the company the person that you're reaching out to and people love talking about themselves awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well that is so true <laughs> so if you put it on the person and say bringing out what value that you can learn from them or even doing a little bit digging on their LinkedIn, find some common ground, see if you went to the same school, see, oh, yeah. if, you, see if you have mutual connections, or even stalk their LinkedIn posts and see if they've posted a recent blog or text post that you resonate with, and even comment on that, yeah. and kind of lead from there. So another one that we got from Jenna Craig, she says, any tips from trying to make LinkedIn connections definitely goes with what we were just saying, a company that you love, but you don't have any mutual connections with. Let me read this. Any tips for trying to make? I would just say just just reach out to them. Yeah, I was going to say, just do it. Like, even if you don't have like a direct mutual, like first connection, there's like, I don't think it's, you know, it's not like Facebook where you're like, oh, this person knows nobody that I know, you know, it's LinkedIn. It's a little bit more different. Yeah. But what yeah. Do you think? yeah. I mean, also too, Jenna, you could easily just before you even reach out to them because everything is public, right? You don't have to be someone's connection to view their, their posts and engage in their posts. So what you can do, Jenna, is say if you are following someone at, from, from one of your favorite companies and they are and they're sharing information on a weekly, daily basis, you could comment on one of their posts so you can get noticed, right? And then when you reach out to them and say, hey, June, I just came across and, put, and commented on your recent article about the mom project. I'd right. love to connect. Simple as that. And bam, you have a connection there. And then you can continue the conversation. Yes. Um, we have another one, Cassandra Govan. She says, I'm very focused now on what I can offer the business opposed to what I could get from the business. I read what they write to see how it, um, I can help based on their struggles. That's very true. I think that's a, a great tip. Um, just a lot. There's a lot of noise on LinkedIn now. There's so much noise. And you really want to, like, break out of that noise and like just differentiate yourself from the clutter, honestly. Um, what other tips do you have, June, when it comes to, um, you've talked about creating content, you talked about um, what worked for you, what didn't, but um, what, what other tips do you have for people that are um, in the job seeker mindset and they just have not had any luck with just, you know, with everything going on, um, on just utilizing their LinkedIn better? Yeah, I would, um, I would really come up with like a job search strategy and really, well, actually first, I think the biggest thing is, especially too, if you've been working for a company and for some time right and for example one of the recent clients um one of the recent clients i've worked with she was at a company for 15 years she's also a mother um and she did she didn't she hasn't interviewed in, in such a long time didn't know anything about linkedin um and I think the first thing that you should do as a job seeker, and if you've experienced a layoff, is take some time to reflect and embrace with those emotions. And um, before you start, before you start looking for work, because if you're not mentally, if you're not there at, at the right headspace, how can you speak confidently in interviews? Or how can you, how can you have the right mindset to actually update your resume? Yeah. Right. So I think um, I think first thing is to really just deal with the emotions that a layoff brings. And it's kind of like a grieving process. You know, what are your thoughts on this? 
Scott. I agree 100%. So um, we talk a lot about this at the Mom Project as well. We have um, every Friday we host Unity Hours, which um, are like kind of our space to kind of just dive in on subjects that our community really needs. And one of them was definitely on just like building confidence. Because a lot of people, when they're in the job seeker mindset, they are like, rushing to get that job, but it really starts with like, okay, let's build that confidence first. So you can already put yourself in the mindset that you have that job. Because once you put that in your mindset, um, you'll be good to go. So um, I want to introduce a mom that we're going to help during our little broadcast. Um, thanks guys for staying with us. June and I both um, were like, broadcast journalist in our past life. So we just, really? this, is basically, this is basically like our little talk show. Um, we're just like living our little broadcast dreams here. Uh, but I wanted to definitely um, see how June can util help a mom utilize um, these amazing tips that she has. So I want to introduce you guys to Andy. She's originally from Venezuela um, and she's lived in the United States for the past eight years. Um, she is a mother of a two-year-old and she has a bachelor's degree in business and a master's degree in marketing. Um, she's currently unemployed um, and moved to a new city uh, right before the pandemic started. And it's been very difficult for her to re-enter the job market, which is very similar to a lot of you out there that are uh, looking to re-enter and of course, unprecedented times happened. So uh, she's been taking online classes, updating her resume. She's been networking online, constantly applying for jobs in different industries. But um, we're gonna take time from for her today to just have June kind of look at her LinkedIn and see how she can um, start navigating LinkedIn, right? So hi, Andy, thank you for joining us. Hello, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm very excited and nervous as well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be nervous, guys. This is easy. You know, just a couple, just a couple, just a couple people look watching us. No, no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> couple of famous LinkedIn people, you know. Right, no big deal. Uh, okay, so June, I will let you take it away with Andy. Okay, well, Andy, actually wanna like, wanna say how we actually met? Well, actually through LinkedIn. Um, this is probably my, my second job after taking care of my baby is every day I go through LinkedIn and see what is going on, trying to post something important. But I think you came into my feed because one of your videos actually took uh, my attention and said, oh, this woman is great. And then I reach out to you because uh, you use a lot of videos with subtitles and I'm starting a project on my side and I thought, oh, wow, I want to know which one she's using. And that is how we started. Exactly. See the power of a LinkedIn connection? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and then we just started building this relationship on LinkedIn and then we had our first virtual chat last week because she reached out to me um, as a job seeker asking for advice. And then when we we're putting this together, I'm like, Andy's a perfect person to, to be our guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so what, but let me pull up your LinkedIn profile right now. So is that okay if I share it with everyone? Yes. <laughs> or no? Yes or no? I'll yeah, yeah, up. absolutely, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So what are your what are your questions? Well, I, I if I can know a few things, we, one will be in my description. Should I post something? The next job I want to be in, the job I was before, a combination of both, or a statement with some keywords. Yes. So first things I see is you do have like marketing account manager. Right. Um, you definitely want this is like a very I want to want to share this with everyone. This is out of all of like out of your whole entire profile. This right here is the most important real estate of your LinkedIn profile. OK, because as a recruiter or sourcer, if I am searching for a marketing account manager, the first thing is that's going to come up and what recruiters see on their end as us using LinkedIn recruiter is something different that job seekers see. So the first thing that comes up on their search is your name and your title and your headline. This is your headline right here. Headline. Mm -hmm. So you want to include as many keywords as possible because just like Google, LinkedIn is a, is a, is a search engine. 
And and Hiba knows this as a social media manager, you want to make it SEO friendly. A hundred percent. What does like, that mean, yeah. Hiba? So basically that is um, uh, how search engines can check like for specific keywords. So if you have like social media um, and if somebody's looking for social media, that's going to pop up. So you want to pick um, SEO friendly titles, like June just said, um, that it's going to get people like your attention very quickly. It'll be like one of the first. So you just want to stand out from the crowd because like we said, there's a lot of noise on LinkedIn. So you want to cut the noise out, right? So I would definitely, like marketing is definitely a key word because mm -hmm. that's the title that you're looking for. Account manager as well. But I, for you, I would probably add a little bit more value by having a statement saying maybe like marketing manager, building awareness for, and then maybe the type of industries that you're, you're targeting or company. Okay. Like for, I know from talking to you and, and knowing you now for, what a couple of weeks I want to say that I do feel like I've known you forever now but I, I feel that your what would you say your target company or industry is the wine and spirit industry and I want to stay in the marketing and sales section yeah then there you go building brand awareness for for companies within the wine and spirit industry like marketing manager marketing account manager or even strategic because strategic is a is an, is an important keyword because mm -hmm. you're building those strategic relationships and partnerships. Correct. Right? Okay, so, so we'll be a strategic marketing account manager or is that? You could do that. that. You could, and I have an exercise I can share with you, but strategic marketing account manager, building brand awareness for companies or for, for, uh, for companies within the wine and, and spirit industry or something like that. Well, you could play around with it. And I, that's something that I work with my clients is a, is a writing exercise. But I would definitely mention your role that you are in or what you are aspiring to be and what value are you going to bring to companies? What is the value that you're bringing? Perfect. Okay. So let me put you on the spot. What, what is the value you're going to bring as a marketing manager? I'm very good looking where we are, where we need to be, and how we are going to reach a goal. It doesn't matter if I sell tires, shampoo, or wine. I, I, I have always <laughs> been, I have that mindset, seriously. It's just a, a gift. So that is my strategic point. Like, okay, you want to be here, you want to be there. How can I help you to create value? Or how we are going to create value for our customers? That is what I do. And how do you do that? Well, I need to know where we are, you know, what is the story, with, which is our competitors, uh, what is going on in the market, what is trendy, what didn't work in the past, and what are resources, you know, you know, monetary and people-wise, and okay, let's see who is there that can help us. Probably it's a company that is offering a service that can help us to deliver a, um, a product or a service in a more seamlessly way. Or, you know, there is a new vendor in the market or whatever. You know, it depends on the case. Right, right. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I wanted to throw in there. So, right now, um, Andy is kind of having like a career break. So, what would you recommend um, to add to her uh, profile for her career pause? I know at the Mom Project, we've been kind of... Um, we've been kind of sharing around that you can add the mom project for your uh, career pause. And um, I can actually like put the link in the chat while um, June uh, kind of helps Andy. But um, what do you recommend um, how she should kind of like when she's talking to people, like how to bring up like her career pause right now? That's a great question. And I think that's one of Andy's questions that she sent over. And I do love that feature of having that career pause, adding on your resume. Mm -hmm. But what's great about Andy, even though she's not working, her career is still continuing because she has a passion project with keeping the wine fun. And I'm not sure if you had this on your LinkedIn before we chatted. Uh, I did it. I added yesterday, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I told you to do. And I <laughs> So great with uh, you're great already like taking feedback and I told her to do this because this basically shows that as a job seeker she is being proactive and taking this time to invest in her own business her brand and what was your concern like what did you mention in in the email that you with the question about your personal brand on LinkedIn 
first because it's brand new. I have a small community still because I started less than two months ago. And I was concerned about the, uh, my passion project giving away the idea that I'm still looking for a job because my goal is to you know, continue growing my personal brand, but I also want to continue my career, you know, and I am a mom and I want to contribute in my family's, you know, economy. So with all this beauty, I, I see beauty everywhere after COVID is more flexibility, I think. So if you can find a job with flexibility, they can allow you to do both. Why, why not? Why, why I cannot be the person that find a job? Right, exactly. And and what, what you're actually sharing is the fact that you are using this time to to build your own personal brand on LinkedIn, which many job seekers don't do. And it's still relevant, Andy, to what you're doing in your role, wouldn't you say? Because it's marketing and your diet your desired industry is the wine and spirit industry. Correct. Right? Yes, correct. And my target is very clear. I'm, I'm targeting uh, younger generations, uh, meaning millennials and Gen Zs with their legal age to, to drink in their home country in a bilingual environment. Because I am, as HIVA, all about multicultural and, you know, in diversity. To me, that's very important because I'm, I'm Latin myself and I love this country and I want to be able to, to share my experience in the both language I speak. Both languages I speak. Right. So as far as, and that's great. And I'm, I'm glad that you're taking this time to to share this passion and utilize your skills. The fact that you are bilingual and the fact that you are, um, some, is it some Yeah, sommelier. correct. <laughs> and I wish I had your, your, your Instagram feed because you have great videos and I'm trying to encourage Andy to share this on LinkedIn. That's a question I have that I feel like maybe other people have too. Um, when you talked about creating content and sharing videos, like what is too much, you know, like what kind of videos do you think people should be sharing? You know, you don't want to make it so much like an Instagram page, but then again, you know, you want to grab attention, create that network. So, um, do you have any advice on that? Like what is a little too much to be, I mean, I see your videos and you are, very good dancer, I might say. <laughs> but like uh, when it comes to the, just like the content people want to share, like what is appropriate for the certain jobs that they do want to get? I mean, and I'm not the one to like tell someone like what's too much. But like for me, like sometimes for me, I think I may be posting too much. Right. But I post what my community wants to see. Right. And for me, and I've said this too, because uh, I, I know there's probably people like how can she how can how can she put herself out there and, and dance on LinkedIn? And for me, it's this is how I show up at work. This is who I am. I, I, I everyone knows I love to dance. Everyone knows that I'm high energy, highly competitive, and they always know that I'm always talking about my children at work because they're my biggest why. Why wouldn't I show up like this on LinkedIn? So show up, guys, the way you show up to work. Pretty and, much. and in life, you know. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think if you are, oh my god, this is like a total mom moment, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just that. I think it's a, okay. Okay, it's that's life. fine. Um, so, okay. oh wait, but I do want to say, I think for for anyone that's trying to think of what to share, share some value. Share some value. Yeah. Share what you know. Right. So um, as June said, kind of share what you know, share what makes sense for you, for your personal brand. Um, some things that work for June might not work for anybody else. So it just depends on your personal brand and kind of uh, where you see yourself going and what you feel comfortable sharing on LinkedIn, knowing that there are recruiters there. So um, Andy, are there any other questions that you have on just ways to make your LinkedIn page a little bit more um, enticing, I should say, for uh, the jobs that you are looking for? Yeah, actually I asked her, and I'm sorry, I'm reading my notes, it's like how to optimize the about section. 
because mm. I have another portion, you know, like I have tweaked so many times <laughs> and I'm not sure, I have read that uh, recruiters have like a six, seven seconds to read, go through. So you, I don't know what exactly to put there, you know? She told me before I had at the beginning recently relocated to Seattle because we moved uh, from Atlanta to Seattle due to an excellent opportunity for my husband right before COVID. So I landed in a new city and I am trying to explain people, okay, this woman is from Venezuela, live in Atlanta, now it's in Seattle, what is going on? So I had that, like, you know, recently relocated to Seattle. Mm -hmm. and said, you know, probably it's not a good idea. So sometimes I feel like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah. So we're talking about the about me section, June. And, you know, a lot of people, like Andy said, uh, recruiters don't have that much time to look at, you know, your full profile. Maybe they just scan it. Um, what do you recommend for the about section? Keep it short and sweet. The SEO keywords. I mean, no one's putting their whole bio in there. So I know for sure, like stay away from just something super long, um, but short, sweet to the point is what I would recommend. So I just want to hear your thoughts. Yes. And this is the beauty of live, right? My yes! son is here. Yeah! <laughs> one second. <laughs> Hold on. One. That is um, so mom life, life. life. Right. Mom life 101, guys. Yeah. Um, my but, daughter is down there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He had to come by to get his bike. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think with your about section, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, Andy, is it takes a recruiter, even with resumes and LinkedIn, probably an average between six to seven seconds to scan. And what they're doing is they're trying to look, they're trying to find what they're looking for. And just to kind of give you a little insight as a recruiter, being in the industry and a recruiter secret, we sit down with hiring managers and build a strategic recruiting and sourcing plan and the intake meeting. And I'm asking them, one of the questions I ask is, what are some keywords, buzzwords that I would see in a resume from your ideal target potential client? Mm -hmm. candidate, right? Mm -hmm. So I think this right here, the first two sentences is very critical. You want to put something as like a, a, a quick and engaging hook to letting the, let the recruiter know who you are. Um, you say that you are a bilingual marketing and sales professional. I would probably be specify which languages you're, um, you um, are bilingual with. Mm -hmm. And then sales professional with 15 years of progressive experience in developing robust branding strategies and consumer. That's great. I would probably also mention the industries that you're interested in. Okay. And you do have just, to, and what I do want to highlight here is Andy did a great job by including these core competencies with the different keywords that you would see on a resume or on a job description. Right. And then right here in your about section, you could probably do this too in your experience section. You want to, I probably recommend highlighting two to three accomplishments that you've done at companies. Okay. And quantify, include metrics if you can, and numbers, whether it's basically increasing sales by your marketing strategy. Um, but does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, including numbers, because, you know, I have tweaked, as I said, many times this section and I see, you know, oh, your profile show up in X or Y companies and I get so all excited, but then they never call me and I say, oh my, <laughs> you know. Push on that, because you can see who's viewing your profile, right? Mm -hmm. That's another step that you can do is reaching out to someone. And well, say, sometimes you can see, you know, the recruiter, somebody with a uh, job title recruiter. Yeah, so I think to like activate premium to see oh, um, like right. everybody. yes i guess if not if you're not on premium um it just i am on premium actually and it still shows it depends if the person the recruiter doesn't want to be shown or listed you, you don't see it it says okay. somebody for example in x or y company and right. then you can click and look at yeah and actually sometimes i just go back and circle you know to your earlier point uh but i am one of the many looking for jobs so it's, it's a battle. <laughs> I know for sure it's going to happen for you, Andy. I want to thank you for joining us today. You, um, I want to let you know that we will also have a Unity Hour, which I kind of talked about earlier, which is our event series that we do um, through the Mom Project on YouTube, which if you follow our page, 
um, which I've linked in the comment section. Um, follow us, you'll get all the updates for Unity Hour. We're doing this session um, just a little bit deeper diving into just personal branding and LinkedIn. Uh, we're gonna do it on November 13th. So Andy, okay. please like jo RSVP, join join the mom project. Um, we have I a am. lot of jobs. You are? Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. I was gonna say, if you're not, <laughs> for you but um uh join the mom project it's like thank an you. amazing resource so thank you um thank you guys thanks so much for joining us and then um i wanted to jump into some questions june um for like our last couple of minutes um andy's so sweet um i know i know, I know it's gonna happen for her it's definitely she actually has a job interview today Yay! Everyone send positive vibes for Andy. Please, please, uh, please. So let's see. We have a question on, um, and this is kind of broad, but I guess we could focus it more on LinkedIn. But how do you make yourself stand out among other applicants, especially right now? Um, she says, I was let go due to COVID from my first full-time position. Um, and I've been having a hard time getting interviews. Any tips would be helpful. The way to stand out is branding yourself on LinkedIn, like I mentioned, by optimizing your LinkedIn profile, but also to, like for me, how I have been standing out as like a business owner, and I've been having these amazing opportunities with the mom project, and then also to, uh, I do want to announce that I'm going to be working, we're working on something really exciting with Shanae Murray, mm. who is one of the top top mar top LinkedIn marketers and influencers. She has over 500 million users. I'm actually trying to get her on the mom project. Yes. She's awesome. Awesome. Yes. She's awesome mother. Um, and I used to, I used to watch her videos always thinking to myself, I wish I could do what she's doing right in April. And now I'm going to be able to work with her because of how of LinkedIn and just showing up. So then how you can stand out as a job seeker is you want to, as I mentioned, look at your LinkedIn profile as an extension of you, as an extension of your brand, and optimize your LinkedIn profile with all of those keywords. And then that's what you want to do before you even start networking, because you want to make a compelling LinkedIn profile before you start reaching out to hiring managers or recruiters. The biggest thing, too, is having informative chats, coffee virtual chats with people in your target industry and just learn from them and mm -hmm. and just expand your and network. I think one, one LinkedIn survey that I saw was about 80% professionals say that networking has contributed to their professional growth and it hadn't even had led to opportunities. So the standout is basically you need to start asking for help. You need to start reaching out to people. Create those learning. opportunities. Yep. Yes. And get mentorships. Go to events like this, like with the Mom Project. The Mom Project has an amazing program. Yes. Rally program. Our rally program, which with the word mentor, there's such like a huge weight to that, right? Because you expect so much from your mentor. So when we're our program, rally, it's peer-to-peer -peer boosters is what we call it. So like, for example, June could be my booster because she's somebody that like could boost me up when I need it. Um, I could pick her brain. We do a great way of matching people that either kind of have similar backgrounds to you professionally or um, you guys kind of sort of have like the same kind of skill sets. Um, so our program is Rally. I'll link it in the comments. Um, it's just a really great program to like boost each other up because we need that 100% right now. Um, but yeah, programs like that, joining programs um, for mentorship, a coaching, like we have unity coaching too, but like those are things you could do to just stand out from the yeah. crowd for sure. Like one of the workshops and then also to um, investing in yourself by getting a coach like me, I'm just yeah. a little plug in right there that yeah. can help you with this time. If you don't know where to start when it comes to your job search, also to think about ways how you can show up differently on interviews to stand out because everything's being done virtually, right? So yep. maybe instead of telling about your experience, showing your experience by doing a creative slide deck or pitch deck. 
Sorry, I was just putting um, the Unity Matching and Rally uh, links in the comments. So, um, uh, Joel, there is not a dad project, but we help dads. Like I said in the beginning, um, we are all about, um, we help mothers, we help women, but we're, we help caregivers too. Uh, we are not biased in that way. So check out the mom project. It's all for anyone that's looking for flexible work, um, we were focused on remote work before everybody went remote, um, but that's still something that uh, we focus on. So we help everybody, Joel. We don't discriminate here at the Mom Project. <laughs> we just emphasize on the moms, but we help dads too. <laughs> I'm actually going to put something on the comments. I've created, you know, as a recruiter, I have learned different strategies on how to how to brand yourself as a candidate, and I've probably seen close to over 5,000 resumes. Yeah. And, and you've prepped maybe over 1,000 people, maybe more than that. So I know what it takes to get hired at companies. I'm putting a link right here in the comment section. I've created a free resource that's called Five Game Five Game Changing Strategies to Level Up Your Job Search. It goes over different ways on how to rebuild your resume, how to brand your LinkedIn profile, as well as networking strategies to stand out compared to the job seekers that you are competing with mm -hmm. but i'm going to put this here um if anyone wants to download it feel free to go to my website yes um that's a really great resource we have a lot of great resources at the mom project too but i feel like um moms are awesome uh i just feel like connecting here like for example i met June through LinkedIn as well. I feel like I was introduced to you because Colleen, our um, chief of community, who is amazing, Colleen, if you're watching, um, she introduced me to you and she was like, this is the person you need to go on LinkedIn Live with. It's just the power of these kind of connections. So I think um, I want to ask you, June, uh, what is one thing you want to leave our community and audience with today with just the power of um, just navigating networking on LinkedIn. Um, I know for me, it's have that open mind um, and uh, just make those connections because you just never know what, um, what you never know where it's going to lead you. Now me and June are fast friends and we're already <laughs> thinking of our like next LinkedIn live, you know? Um, yeah. So actually, what would yeah. you leave with our community today? I'm going to actually wrote a blog about this. I'm going to post this on the, um, the comment section. But um, some of my tips, uh, here's a survey. 80% of professionals consider professional networking too important to customer or career success. Some of my strategies is when it comes to network, know where you want to network, what companies you want to network with, what industries, right? before you actually want to start reaching out to people know your intention or your motivation behind networking is it because you are looking for a new job is it because you want to look for mentorship understand your why and then also to understand what value you can bring to that conversation right so understand your why your motivation and then have your elevator pitch ready when you are ready to reach out to have those informative chats and this is actually going to help you prep you when you answer that famous question, tell me about yourself. Who are you, right? So when you have an effective um, elevator pitch, it's going to be easier for you to have these conversations in networking. Like for me, it's like, hi, I'm, my name is June. I spent the last five years building teams within tech space, and now I have transitioned as a career strategist. That's probably less than 30 seconds, right? So what would you say you want to think of what is that you? Yeah, sorry. I was trying to get, uh, I'm like trying to do things in the background. Um, yes. Yeah, so I was trying to answer uh, Cheryl's uh, question. Um, we have webinars for that. I was like, thank you, Liana. Uh, I was like trying to do that while you were talking, but keep going. <laughs> um, but yeah, have your elevator pitch ready. And then when you are, I think this is another question. I don't know if Kim is on here, but Kim, Kim Smith is one of my connections and she asked me, so you get the connection, you get the conversation going, but what's next? What do you start doing? Um, you invite them for a coffee chat, informative chat, say that you want to learn a little bit more about their experience and just learn from them. And then when you are meeting with them, start with a conversation about them, never about you first, right? 
and then asking them what do you like um when meeting new people it's always helpful to have a go-to thoughtful question to start the conversation what do you do can be replaced how have you gotten to where you are in your career Mm -hmm. it's an open-ended question right and then um, it's always important to, to, to follow up and build those relationships. This is why I'm doing the mom project. A year ago today. I know. Tell them. <laughs> I'll tell them. A year ago today, I went to my first and only event because of COVID. In October of last year, the mom project hosted an event for, for companies and job seekers I think we were talking about how companies are supporting working mothers mm-hmm. um, with maternity leave, as well as providing them the flexibility as far as schedule at Uber. And I met Denise there. Yes. Love and them. that's where it started. And because I continue to show up as I am showing up on LinkedIn, they reached out to me and then we continue to build and foster that relationship. So that's what you need to do is if you want to get to these dream companies of yours, Start building those connections. Like I mentioned, LinkedIn is like the yellow pages of all of your dream companies. Yeah. You're this close to them. This close. This close. (laughs) You're this close. And, um, you know, do it strategically. Like June said in the beginning, you don't want to get buried down into their inboxes. You know, maybe you don't hit that recruiter, but maybe you talk to somebody, um, in the company, maybe you message somebody that has a similar title that what you're looking for, or they work on the team of uh, what you're trying to go for. And you're like, hey, I see that you're on the marketing team. I want kind of I'm applying for this job in marketing. Um, I want to talk to you. They probably can direct you to the manager that's hiring for that role. Um, you just have to keep showing up. And I think that is like the great piece of advice you could leave with us today is show up, do the work, uh, do it strategically because, you know, you don't want to just send an in mail and be like, all right, I'm not going to check up on it. It is what it is. I did what I needed to do. And then you just, you know, um, it's, it takes time. And that's what I know it sucks, but it's just one of those things that, um, you know, if you want it to come back to you really well, uh, it just takes time to like get it done. Yeah. It takes about, I think, how many weeks to make it a habit? Is it three weeks, I think? I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure what the saying is. I think it's three or 21 days. 21 days to uh, build a habit, 90 days to create a lifestyle. See what hey I guys, mean? you guys have 21 days and 90 days <laughs> to make it a lifestyle. Thank you guys for joining us today. I hope... Um, Yes, there are people willing to connect and help those 100%. I'm one of them. I feel like yes. people connect with me and I'm like, I just remember when I was looking and fun fact, I got my job at the Mon Project through LinkedIn. I didn't. I don't know why I didn't say that. My um, boss now found me on LinkedIn. We both went to the same school. We both went to Loyola and um, she sent me a LinkedIn in mail. And that's how I landed the job at the mom project. And I've never been happier. I never want to leave the mom project. And it's, you will find your dream jobs. I a hundred percent agree. So thank you guys all for joining us today. Thank you, June, for just being you and being amazing. I can't wait to host a uh, unity hour with you soon. Um, I hope this was helpful to all of you guys. We'll have the replay up on June's page, up on um, the mom project page. So make sure you're following us there. Um, I just can't thank you enough. And um, we will see you guys very soon. Um, yes, Shy town represent. Shout out to Cassandra. <laughs> Shout out to Cassandra. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So um, thank you so much, June. Um, and yeah, see you guys. you guys. See you soon. See you next month.